Welcome to Gospel Music USA, bringing you the best in Southern Gospel music from coast to coast. Now here are your hosts of Gospel Music USA, Danny Jones, Karen Peck Gooch, and Mike Lefevre. Hey everyone, welcome to Gospel Music USA. We've got a great program for you, but before we begin, I need to introduce everybody to you. Standing over there on the far left is Mike Lefevre of the Lefevre Quartet, Karen Peck Gooch of Karen Peck and New River, and my name is Danny Jones of Singing News Magazine, and we are thrilled that you are with us today. Karen, tell us about our show. Well, we have a very good show planned today. We have Dr. Jerry Goff with us, and I know he's all, our, all of our heroes. Oh yeah. He's I mean, really. A singer, songwriter, preacher, the yes. list goes on and on. And, and we're oh, you forgot a word. You forgot a very important word there, Mike. Mr. MC. No, well, that too. Well, that, oh, that's oh, three, oh, three the words. The MC, <laughs> yes. Right. But you still, you still left out a very important word, and that word is legend. This man is a true legend in the world of Southern Gospel music. We would not be where we were are today without him, or would we? That's, that's right. And I, honestly, uh, there are a lot of people that pattern themselves yeah. after his MC exactly. work as well, exactly. and uh, which is really great. You see young people coming up, and uh, this, he's a really just a great role model. Right. So let's let Jerry Goff do what he does best. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the legend, Jerry Goff. Oh, well, thank you so much, Danny and Karen and Mike. What a trio. Don't you love the Lord this morning? Whatever the day of time is over there, listen to what this song said. I can't believe he did it just for me. That he would bleed and die upon the tree. In shame and such disgrace, my Jesus took my place. I can't believe he did it just for me. Now this is right out of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that he would bleed and die for everyone. But listen. But if upon this earth there been no other he would still have gone to Calvary I can't believe he did it just for me oh that he would bleed and die upon the tree in shame and such disgrace my Jesus took my place. I can't believe he did it just for me. I guess I'll never know the depth of his great love that he would pay the price of sin for me. For when he said it's finished that day at Calvary, oh, that's the moment life began for me. I can't believe he did it just for me. Oh, that he would bleed and die upon the tree. for me in shame and such disgrace my Jesus took my place I can't believe he did it just for me everyone, welcome back to Gospel Music USA. Our guest today is none other than Dr. Jerry Goff. And you know, when we introduced him a little bit earlier today, uh, we forgot some things that we need to add to that list. Arthur, he writes books. Yes. 
he's also a TV host. We didn't mention that, did we? Did we mention songwriter? Jerry, did we mention songwriter? No. Bill, Bill Payer. Bill Payer. Bill, Bill yeah. <laughs> and here is one of the things he is most proud of, former bus owner. That's right. <laughs> did, you know, did you know gospel buses are mentioned in the Bible? Oh, really? Yeah, they are. It says, you know, that a millstone wrapped around your neck will sink you in the ocean. That's a Greek word for bus. I <laughs> think. Yeah, okay, great, great, great. That's true. Hey, we did, we did leave out one businessman. So we need to ask you, Mike, is this unanimous? How do you pay for a bus? <laughs> well, I tell you, it's not easy in gospel, you know, because uh, church offerings are wonderful and flats are great, but uh, buses are expensive. Yes. And so to do that, it just it's just management and of course, taking care of finances and your budget. You know, I found it's not so much uh, the bus as the repairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love it. Best introduction I ever had one time. I pulled into a truck stop, you know, to you know, how we have to stop and get fuel. And a man walked over and said, man, I love your bus. What's wrong with yours? I said, man, that'll start a conversation right there. <laughs> yeah, that, you always got a light out or a plug out or something. Going. You can't live with them and you can't live without them. That's the gospel when truth right there. 200 days a year. That's yeah. right. That's right. Oh, yeah, and and also, you know, there's safety factor. People don't think about that, but you're riding above the normal impact of a car so that uh, if, if in a wreck a car would hit you, it would probably go under you. would take another bus or semi, you know. So it's a big safety factor too. Sure. Well, you know, speaking of all this traveling issues that we've all experienced along the way, uh, you've got to have a, a storehouse full of travel stories. What, what's a story that sticks out in your mind? A story that sticks out in my mind. Well, one, you know, I've emceed a lot of programs. And one time we were singing at Temple University in Baltimore, Maryland. They asked me to MC, even though we were part of the program. I said, that's all fine. I'd be glad to help. So I'm MC and bringing on the program. And uh, I brought in a group. Well, I had to use the restroom, you know. So I had seen, I knew that the restroom was downstairs. So I brought the group on and, you know, I let them go on. And I went back through the backstage and went downstairs to the restroom, not knowing that that door locked and I couldn't get back in, you know. <laughs> so, so when I went downstairs and then then I came back up with the door to the auditorium to the stage was locked. I couldn't get in. Well, I didn't know what to do. But you know that in stages a lot of time out there in the front where the orchestra pit, there's a little door down underneath there where the orchestra can come in. You know what I've seen that? And so, so I fumbled around down there and found that door that went in under, you know, to the orchestra pit. And there was an old stand-up piano. Remember the old stand-up upright, you know? And there, in the orchestra pit up against the wall. So I climbed up on the, on the seat and climbed up on top of the, uh, of the old stand-up piano and brought on the next group. I right. you. <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. Crawled over the <laughs> side of that thing and we went on with the program. Yeah. You know, we were saying uh, before the, the cameras came on that uh, all these things we were saying about you, I mean, it really is true. And a well, lot of you've people... you've overdone it, but you're very kind. Well, but people do pattern themselves after you with their MC oh, work. Goodness. And the thing is, now, um, have you always MC'd? Uh, have you always been a talker? <laughs> Is that one and the same? That's, that's that's, from a that, talker. And you're asking me? And you're asking me? What's going on over here? That's the truth, but I mean, like, you have to, you have mean, to connect. You know, I mean, you're a communicator. I, and I tell you, you, yes. you talk about that, but I remember. Uh, and I hate to go back this far, when I was a little boy, a uh, Hawassi Fair. Thank you so much. The Hawassi <laughs> Fair. And, uh, and I remember. You, I, I believe it was the Thrasher Brothers at that point. Yeah, you were the yeah. Thrasher Brothers. Uh -huh. And I remember y'all used to do a song called The Heavenly Parade. Uh -huh. And and I remember y'all coming in with the horns. I, yeah. I mean, it was just yeah. a... It was captivating to me, still to this day. Well, to this day. You're, you're making my heart smile. That's a good memory. Yeah, for many, many years, you know, I, as in the concert world, particularly not just in the churches, but in the concert world, I would come in from the back, right. playing the auditorium, playing the uh, trumpet. And that's true. And did you know you mentioned the High Wash Affair? And that's true. This year, I was there. It was my 49th year in a row wow. to be at that oh, fair. Wow. Isn't that something? And I'll tell you, when, when I, I remember seeing you, it was just under a tent back then. Oh, that's right. 
right. Yeah. yeah, Bob Anderson was the man head of it, right. and he was out in the middle of the of the town square up downtown. Yeah, yeah, boy, it's big and beautiful. Out there oh, on yes. the lake now. Oh, yeah. Thanks, That's a fun thing. That's a good memory, too. Yeah. And that heavenly parade was just, you know, Buddy wanted to sing, and we'd finally turn it over to him and then leave him with it. <laughs> you know. Hey, you know, speaking of heavenly parade, guys, do you know that you're sitting in the presence right now of someone who has firsthand knowledge of how the classic Red Book hymnal was put together. His family uh, is, is well steeped in that particular book. Jerry, you, you got to tell the story about uh, about your father. Yes, that's, uh, the, the Red Back Hymnal, you know, we all hear it, and that's really popular now. You know, it kind of had a resurgence. And the Red Back Hymnal, really, to be honest with you, it's sort of the Bible of the gospel music industry. You know, those songs that are in there. That began, it was an idea formed by Clifford Bridges and some of the members of the committee in 1949. Boy, this is really going to tell. <laughs> but my dad was a member of that committee. And uh, they wanted to have a composite church hymnal that was of the songs they were singing. Now, a lot of people watching the program maybe don't and may not remember, but the old Limp Back Convention songbook. Do you remember those? Yes. Sort of. And do you remember those old Limp yeah. Back? You know, they came out every year, and it was the songs that were written in the year past, and they were convention type songs. And that was a convention songbook. Well, they invited three men. One was Vep Ellis, one was Otis McCoy, and the other was Whit Denson. Those three men my dad being on the committee to invite those men to do it, said, uh, would you put together a, a church hymnal from those books? So those men, you ever wonder why so many great songs are in the Red Back Hymnal? It's because they're the best of the best. They went back to those convention songbooks that had been coming out for say 40 years since 1910. You know, they were, had been coming out and they picked the top songs, the songs that they learned at camp meetings, the songs they learned at ministers meetings, you know, when it came out, boy, they picked the best. So they picked the best songs out of those convention songbooks and put them in what we now refer to as the Red Back Hymnal. Now, it's in Greenback, too, but it hasn't become as popular. And then, of course, to make it full hymnal, they included songs by Isaac Watts, and they include songs by Fanny Crossman, I'm Thine, O Lord, Pass Me, Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance. And then they included some Christmas songs. But the Red Back Hymnal, their 450-page book uh, of songs, has become the Bible of the Southern Gospel Music Industry and my dad was one was the head of the committee that said let's put this book together and then it was published in 1950 i believe first came out in 1951 didn't realize what a winner they had but it sold over 12 million books by wow. now and now wow. even now uh -huh. in the recent past year or two uh -huh. is really making another comeback oh it's yes. making it a comeback yeah. man i'm saying. telling you it is yeah. i mean people are getting together and having these red book things yeah. oh yeah and, and you know it's filling up church Yes. Filling yeah. up auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. Blows my mind. I went to one right here. Are we, can we say Atlanta on the program? Sure. Might okay. Well. <laughs> Where we're at. <laughs> we went to one. We were invited to be the special singers, little Jan and myself, you know. Right. It was at Macklin Road Baptist Church. Yes. And, you know, that's a big church. And we went over there. They turned them away. It's, it's a thousand people in the church. And they turned them away to a red back hymnal. You know, isn't that amazing? I love it. And that old do, do re mi fa sol la ti do. Can you sing the notes? I can sing a few of them. A few of them. <laughs> yeah, I do know the do re mi. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I you know, uh, and I love it. And you know, you were with Rex Neal. Yes. He was one of the best do re mi singers. I was singers. thinking about him when you were talking about yeah. his convention books. Oh yeah. Because Rex and Uncle Alf. Yeah. Oh, Uncle Alf. Well, Absolutely. they could sing. They could just pick them up. Man, I'm excited about this. They you know could just pick Rex, them up and sing it. Rex would get those those uh, little hymnals and the Stamps Baxter books and yeah. and uh, he would get those and he would get um, he'd go into his room and you could hear him going do me so me you and he would pitch. yes he would be in there singing those songs yeah remember the song where could book? I go me 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 re do do re me re you yes re 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 me for me so for me <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that's, that's where could memory. I go but to the Lord. Oh, yeah, you know? that is I just great. remembered that one. Boy, I'm telling you, don't trick my brain too much. I, <laughs> well, when you get old, your memory's not your best asset. But you know what? You know? There's also a, a singing school. <laughs> this fun? Yeah, there's a singing school in Dahlonega. They moved it to yeah. Dahlonega this uh -huh. past year. Oh, really? And, and they have 150 kids oh, that good. are learning. I've got chills. I know. And that they're learning <laughs> the do re mis. Yeah, you know, we're, we're going on a cruise sometime not too far away, you know. Yeah. 
we go on lots of cruises, and y'all are there oh, singing. Yes, you know, we'll there. We ought to get us the Dory Me song and 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 sing it one time. Sneak idea. it up on them. You know? That would be fun. Singing convention on the cruise. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be something? They would. That yeah. Would be yeah. Fun. And we've got a captive audience. And, and do you <laughs> sing, God, Danny? I've never heard you sing. Do you sing? Well, the world's not ready for that. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I like to ease my way into it. Oh, okay? I see. You don't and, want to shock anybody? Right. About another 20 years, they'll hear me. Okay? Well, all right. Well, you could be the business manager of our do re mi trio. There you go. Yeah. Well, how did you have time to actually go to school? And you have a doctorate degree. Well, I went to school. I, I, you know, I, of course, I went to Lee. Now it's Lee University. I went to Lee College. Yes. Then it was a two-year college, liberal arts. And so <clears throat> I graduated from Lee. Then I went to the University of Tennessee. Then I went to uh, Vanderbilt for my master's. Then I went back to California and got a Ph.D. in philosophy and world religions. And then I did graduate, more graduate work from Emmanuel Baptist University and got a Ph.D. from there. And so... I, I, I'm very grateful, but I sang and preached all the way through. Even while I was going to school, every weekend I was singing and preaching. I had to, to pay my bills, you know. <laughs> so I was doing that, and that's. And then when I retired, sort of semi-retired from having the group, uh, uh, Dr. Cottle was the head of Christian Life School of Theology, and they had extension schools in America. And he asked me what I teach. I said, you got to be kidding, you know. Uh, I'm retiring. He said, no, uh, we need teachers like you at your level to teach in our school and in the extension schools. So we fly in on Thursday or drive, where, according to where it is. And we teach three hours Thursday night, seven to 10, that's the three hours. Then three hours Friday night, seven to 10, that's six hours. And then four hours on Saturday morning from eight to 12 for a 10 hour course so that people can get a degree even going to their mega churches. But I, I, that's why I, and I always wanted to, I could almost confess to you the real truth of it is. And I guess I might as well, I've already got my foot in my mouth here. But you know, I was raised on the other side of the tracks do you know what I mean by that? That's a term we all understand. And I was raised in in churches where, you know, like way out on Route 2. And people didn't think of us as being uh, among the educated crowd. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Uh, there, and there was a stigma there. And in my youth, when I was putting up with that and going to school, I said, someday I want to stand eyeball to eyeball with those who are educated and say, I may have a doctorate degree just like you, but I love Jesus as my Lord. Amen. Just because I'm connected with, with uh, an emotional faith and because I'm connected with, a, with sort of an emotional tie with Christ, in no way am I less in knowing what the world's all about than you are. And I can say eyeball to eyeball, he <laughs> is the Christ, the <laughs> son of the living God. Amen. And so uh, that's why I just, I said, I'm going to be there if God God, give me strength. And I got there. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Hey, we're, we're going to that's, good. Good. that's good. We're going to continue our visit with Dr. Jerry Goff in just a little bit. Stay tuned. You're watching Gospel Music USA. Welcome back to Gospel Music USA. And of course, as you can tell, Dr. Jerry Goff is our guest today. And uh, as we learned in the last segment, not only in addition to all those things we called you at the beginning of the program, we can add professor to the list. We can add historian. And uh, I also realized that uh, uh, there's one other thing we can add to that list. What's that? Preacher's kid. That's right. That's right. I'm a PK. I'm all a right. preacher's kid. I'm, I'm going to let you tell everybody about that. I'm going to step off to the side and enjoy this. Here's Dr. Jerry Goff. Oh, thank you, Danny. You're the best. You're the best. You know, that is true. I'm a preacher's kid. And you know, I remember in the early days of my dad's ministry, they weren't always best parsonages. You know, I remember one time the first parsonage that I really remember was just a one car garage. <laughs> dad closed up the part where you drive in the door, cut a hole in the side. I mean, the cars and, and that was, that was a one room garage. And the second one wasn't a whole lot better. It was in Arizona and it was made out of Adobe mud, just mud uh, blocks stacked up and then the chicken wire covering that and then plastic cover net. But you know, that's what made this song so meaningful to me. I love what it says. No matter when I get to heaven, it's not going to be a mud hood. No siree, no cabins in glory. I will get the best that heaven has for me if I am a victor over sin. 
when at last I reach that city or the mystic sea, I don't want to barely make it in. There'll not be a cabin in glory, for gold will be the cheapest thing there. And inside those golden gates are palaces of state, and every child of God will be a multimillionaire. We'll all join in singing the story upon the streets of that eternal strand. And as we dwell with Christ the King, we'll have the best of everything. There'll be no heavens in that land. Jesus told his disciples, in my Father's house are many mansions. Listen to this verse. I don't want a shanty in some lonely nook. Just nestle near a common promenade. I just want a mansion like I'm promised in God's book. Friends with sweetest flowers ever made. There'll not be a cabin in glory, for gold will be the cheapest thing there. And inside those golden gates are palaces of state. And every child of God will be a multimillionaire. We'll all join in singing the story upon the streets of that eternal strand. And as we dwell with Christ the King, we'll have the best of everything. There'll be no Kevins in that land. There'll be no Kevins in that land. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I'm supposed to talk before this next song. And, uh, let me tell you very quickly, not long ago, little Jan, my wife and I, as you well know, we spent several weeks in Italy and uh, just touring around and spent one of the days or several of the days in Rome. And one day we spent just around the Colosseum. And I was standing there in the midst of those ruins that were 2,000 years old and by them talking to my sweetheart. And, and I began to think about the men that had died in that Colosseum for the cause of Christ, fed to the beast and nailed to pillars and torn apart. And I told the devil, I said, you might think you buried Christianity in this pile of rocks, but the name of Jesus still lives on today, 2,000 years later. And that's what this song means to me. This is why I sing the gospel. There is a name, a name above all others, a name that stood the endless test of time. This name has changed the lives of untold millions. This name is Jesus, and this Jesus is mine his name lives on and shall live on forever while kings and kingdoms shall all pass away he is the lord of all the king of all creation the name of jesus is living on today men have tried to blot his name from history denying all the great things he has done listen to this i've heard them curse his name and say there was no calvary oh but through it all his holy name lives on his name lives on and shall live on forever while kings and kingdoms shall all pass away
just gospel music USA but it's about to become church <laughs> USA That's awesome. no other name like the no name no other name <laughs> hallelujah well we've been honored to have this legend with us here on the, our program today and uh, you know love Mike, you guys you, too. well that, that kind of leads me into what I was going to say you know Mike we've called him a lot of things today all of them nice all of them nice and uh, historian professor singer evangelist <laughs> songwriter you know, former you, bus owner that's very important you're, you're, you're just getting too syrupy. You're embarrassing me <laughs> no, or something. No, no, no. You, you've earned it. You're, you're a hero to a lot of us. And uh, there's one other word we've got to add to it. And I think I can speak on the entire behalf of the Southern Gospel Music World when I say this man also is our friend. Yes. So, Absolutely. I tell you what, I, that's true. That's, that's right. True. He's been a friend of Southern Gospel Music. Hey, folks, we're going to see you a little bit later on the next edition of Gospel Music USA.